Hi folks, recently I came across this brilliant skills report called 2018 Developer Skills Report by a terrific company, one of my most loved companies in the education space called Hacker Rank. And for those of you who don't know what Hacker Rank is, you can just go to their homepage, which is hackerrank.com. Hacker Rank, in a nutshell, is where you can practice your coding or software engineering skills. You can compete on competitions and based on how well you perform in these competitions, Hacker Rank helps you or connects you with, with companies which are interested to hire software engineers across the world. It's a terrific company. I've been fortunate to have interacted with one of their co-founders while they were setting up their machine learning team, who is Vivek, who is also one of the authors of, of this skills report. Right? So this skills report has been written, has been written by consulting uh, with, based, based on insights and data from 39,441 developers, approximately 40K developers, right? Even though this is called the developer, it's called the developer skills report, which basically means it's talking mostly about software engineers. You might wonder if this is talking about software engineers, why are we discussing about it? Because on this channel, we mostly focus on AI and machine learning. Right? Because some of the insights that we get from this skills report, which, which are even though collected from software engineers, they're very, very relevant and very, very apt even for AI and machine learning engineer roles. Right? Even though this data is collected from software engineers, it is all, all the insights that, that I've learned from this report are, are, are spot on, are very, very true even for machine learning and AI engineers. Based on my own experiences of having interacted and interviewed hundreds of hundreds of folks for various large tech companies across the world, right? And uh, this is a very nice prologue. I recommend all of you, again, I'll provide you the reference link or, or the URL for this page. Please take some time to read this report. It's a very, very well-written, very, very insightful report. And uh, Vivek is, is the co-founder and CEO, one of the authors of it. It's, it's a brilliant place to read and understand what actually companies want, what actually software engineers who are already working in companies, what are they looking for when they look for people to hire, right? So let's let's go. So there are, there are multiple sections in this. The most important section that I'll go into is the in-demand qualifications, right? So if you just click on this, you'll go to this you'll go to this section of the page. This is what interests me a lot. So the question that is being asked here is very interesting. The question is, what you do matters more than what's on your resume. Okay, this is this is the summary. So the question here is, what qualifications do employers look for based on company size? So let's assume, let's take all company sizes. What are employers actually looking for? What are uh, what are hiring managers looking for? So if you look at it, if you look at it, the most important thing they're looking at is the real world experience of, 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 of actually worked on similar problems, right? So 90% of 90% of employers believe that experience is the most important. The second most important thing, this is what this is this is the crux of it. The second most important thing is the portfolio, right? About 73% of 73% of employers believe that in addition to your experience, if you can showcase your work using a portfolio, which is basically like case studies, which are like case studies or projects, or projects in the field of in the field that you claim you have expertise or experience. If you can show this, it adds huge value. Remember your education, like your college, your degree, all of it comes third. Right? The most important, of course, is experience. Nothing can trump experience. Because if you tell me that you've worked as a machine learning engineer or a software engineer for five years or 10 years and you've been part of so-and-so team or you've been working on so-and-so project, that adds the most value. The second most important thing, this is very, very important thing. The second most important thing is portfolio. As part of our own course, which is appliedaicourse.com, right? as part of our own course, we focus a lot on portfolios, if you have, if you have noticed. We, folk, we encourage all of our students to build a portfolio of at least five case studies. And as part of our course, we also provide internships to most of our students who finish all the assignments. So through internships, through internships, through internships, we provide the real world experience. And we work very, very closely as part of Applied AI course to provide you a portfolio that you can showcase to employers with at least five case studies. Right. This, this, this is something that I have known all along that that we have based our whole this has been the core cornerstone of Applied AI course itself. Because from my own experience as a hiring manager, having interviewed hundreds of people across the world, 
I personally enjoy it when somebody can talk about their own work experience of having solved real world problems and if they can showcase a portfolio for me. And portfolio matters more for students because students don't have real world experience. So the best way for them to showcase their work is to do case studies and projects, put it up on GitHub or on, on a blog and explain it so that when, a rec when, when an interviewer looks it up, on, on, uh, looks up your GitHub profile or when he reads your blog, he understands where you're coming from, what your level of expertise is. Now comes the most important thing. The second part is, okay, what qualifications do executives, execs basically mean executives in a company, look for most, right? So the, sum, the answer for that is execs or executives in companies place the highest value on portfolios and personal projects. Because portfolios and personal projects showcase, showcase to employers what you are passionate about, what you do in your spare time, what you do in your spare time, what you are passionate about. This shows them a lot about what you are fundamentally passionate about and what you are good at. And if you look at it here, portfolio trumps everything else. If you're an executive at a company, let's say you're a director or you're a, you're a senior manager or probably a vice president at a company or maybe a CTO or a CEO of a company, what they're looking for in, in an employee is the most important thing here. The first position here is a portfolio of work. The second is previous work experience. Years of experience is still lower. Education comes first. So whether you studied at a top-notch university or a small engineering college or a small college in your neighborhood, matters much less because it is at position four than what you have done. So in a nutshell, what matters is the skills you have. What matters is the skills you have. Skills that you have and that you can showcase. Just having the skills itself is not sufficient. You should be able to showcase your skills by working on personal projects, building a portfolio as compared to where you went to college. So if I'm in my, in my, own, in my own personal experience, having interviewed students from across the spectrum from some of the finest universities and not so great universities across the world. When I get two candidates, this is my own experience, right? So when I get two candidates, let's say you might get a candidate one with, with the top tier, with a top tier university degree, right? Let's say top 10 universities in the world and second one from not, not so top, uh, a mediocre or a, a mediocre or a, or a small university or a small university. If the top university, so if the if the mediocre university or the small university student can showcase his work using portfolios, if he can share his GitHub profile with me, right? And if he can showcase the five or six projects that he was very passionate about and that he solved and he documented very well versus a top tier university student without a portfolio, I, I'm more inclined to actually interview this person because here the student, because at the end of the day, as, as, as a manager myself, as, as a hiring manager, who has to work with this candidate in the future, his portfolio show his work ethic. His portfolio show what he knows and what he does not know. Just having a university degree, just having a top-notch university degree and some coursework does not tell me or does not showcase to me what the person actually knows and what the person actually doesn't. So portfolios, personal projects are something that I look forward or I looked forward even today when we hire for applied AI course, when, when, when I hire for applied AI course, I look for personal projects and portfolios because that tells me a lot about what the person is passionate about and the fact that the person has the skill, not just a degree. Because skills, given any day, skills matter more to hiring managers than your university degree. Of course, I'm not saying university degree is useless because university degrees also tell you about the rigor that the student has gone through. I do not want to uh, decrease the impact or the importance of university degrees. But if you can, so if a top tier university student can showcase portfolio, right? Because these two people, let's assume, have similar strength portfolio. Then the next thing I look forward for is the university degree and the courses that the person has taken. But if the top top notch university student does not have a portfolio and a small university student has a very very strong portfolio, it's better. Or in my own personal opinion, I give preference to people with portfolios because they have skills that they can showcase skills that they can showcase and I have true data at the end of the day as a machine learning person myself I'm looking for data and portfolios give me the data to make the decision on hiring right so I strongly recommend all of you oh there is there is one more very interesting point so if you go down in this there is also one page where they showcase what programming languages do programmers prefer right again you can see it by age and things like that 
But the overwhelming thing is if you look at all age groups, the programming language that most programmers prefer is Python overwhelmingly. About 85%, look at this, 85% of programmers prefer Python over other languages. The second language is C, which is still at 54%, significantly lower than the 85%. And the reason when we chose, if you look at R here, it's 23%, right? When we started Applied AI course, when we started Applied AI course, one of the, one of the questions we had was, what programming language do we do this whole course in? Of course, for machine learning, typically R and Python are the top choices. But then we went with Python because from my own professional experience and from the experience of my team, Python is a beautiful general purpose language in which you can do machine learning, you can build a web server, you can build a distributed search engine, you can do tons of stuff. The fact that you can do lots of stuff in Python is probably what makes it extremely popular amongst, among software engineers. And Python is also extremely popular amongst machine learning engineers across the world. Having, because it has some of the best libraries in the world and it's extremely easy. I know, I know, I know, I know 10 year old kids uh, who, are, who, are, who are children of my friends who learn, who have already learned Python, who can write simple Python code. If a 10 year old child can learn Python, a software engineer or even a machine learning engineer should trivially, or any smart adult can quickly pick it up and it's not at all hard. So this is another very interesting number that I got from this. Uh, from this insights, uh, from this developer insights uh, uh, article, and uh, uh, for this project, I'm very, very thankful to Hacker Rank for having done this phenomenal survey, and uh, for having for providing this report, which which gives us phenomenal data on what really matters to recruiters and what type of programming languages do developers themselves enjoy and use on a day-to-day -day basis. I strongly recommend all of anybody who's watching this video. To read this skills report, it doesn't take more than like 15-20 minutes to read the skills report. I strongly recommend each of you to read it and gain more insights.